Hello there. This is the final video segment on my tutorials on what is a representation. Let's get going. So let's consider the generic quantum state vector, capital Psi. If you seek the value of momentum, let's say, then you need to apply the momentum operator, which is p hat. We know that applying this gives us the momentum eigenvalue equation. Exactly how that happens is as follows. We know that the arbitrary quantum state vector isn't necessarily in an eigenstate of the momentum operator. However, once you apply the momentum operator, the system must decide what value of momentum it has. In other words, it must choose the associated momentum eigenstate. It collapses or projects into a, an eigenstate of the momentum operator and gives us our momentum eigenvalue equation and allows us to calculate the momentum of the system, in this case p sub n. We say that the system collapses into an eigenstate of the momentum operator with a multiplicative constant, which is the value of momentum. And a very similar thing happens, in fact an analogous thing happens, if you want to find out the value of position using the position operator. Once again, the system collapses into an eigenstate, in this case of the position operator, with a multiplicative constant known as the value of position x sub n in this case. And you're probably sick of me saying that at this point. We know that if operators commute, then the, va then the order of their application isn't important. And this is the commutator between two arbitrary operators a and b, and I recommend that you always operate on an arbitrary quantum state vector when you're doing calculations with operators because it can be tricky otherwise. Anyway, we see that if the commutator is zero, then the operators commute, and if it's non-zero, the operators don't commute. We know that if the operators commute, then the order of their application isn't important, but more specifically, we know that the they share non-degenerate eigenstates, or we can say that they are kind of common eigenstates. And here's where you have something new. Without proving it to you, and it's reasonably straightforward, we can show that position and momentum operators do not commute. Hence, they cannot share eigenstates. They do not have common non-degenerate eigenstates. And what this means is that measuring one affects a subsequent measurement of the other. And this is because each time you apply an operator, the system must decide what state it's in, and it collapses into an eigenvalue of the associated, associated operator. But because position and momentum operators don't commute, they don't share common eigenstates, which means if you measure momentum and then position, you're going to collapse the system from a, a position, excuse me, from a momentum eigenstate into a position eigenstate and vice versa. And as you collapse into a position eigenstate, having subsequently measured momentum, you're no longer in a momentum eigenstate, which means your momentum has changed. So, if you measure momentum, you don't necessarily know a lot about your position and vice versa. If you measure your momentum and then your position, you're going to change the value of your momentum by measuring your position. Mathematically, we can say that the commutator between position and momentum is non-zero. It's iota times Planck's constant over twice pi, h bar. And this is the canonical commutator relationship. This is what explains your diffraction. If you know the position of your object, you don't know a lot about its momentum, its direction. As an aside, by the way, another way of looking at the whole area of uncertainty is to think about the Fourier transform. And if you're narrow, in one space, let's say position space, then you're going to be broad in momentum space and vice versa. And that's what happens during 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 measurement. So if you know your if you know that your your momentum, so it's a very narrow spectrum in your Fourier space, well then when you when you go into your when you take the Fourier transform to get your position, you're going to get a very broad spectrum. In other words, you won't know much about your position. But that's just something I want to throw out for the moment. I really don't want to discuss it. Finally so Let's take the position operator acting on an arbitrary quantum state vector. The quantum state vector must decide 
what value of position it has. It must collapse or project into the associated eigenstate of the position operator, in this case x sub n. Now, subsequently, if we try and measure the value of momentum, so we apply the momentum operator to that particular eigenvalue equation, like this, and that's what I have over here. But x sub n here, this is simply a scalar multiplying or multiplying onto your quantum state vector, your ket x sub n. So it's simply another ket, which I'm going to call x prime sub n, just for simplicity. And we know what happens when you apply an operator onto a ket. The ket must decide what value of momentum it has. It must collapse into an eigenstate of the momentum operator corresponding with that particular value of momentum. And here it is doing it here, collapsing into this particular momentum eigenstate and giving us the associated momentum eigenvalue. And we note that we no longer have the same position eigenvalue that we measured earlier on. So operating on x prime, ket x prime sub n with the momentum operator causes ket x prime sub n to collapse or project onto an eigenstate of the momentum operator, that is to say, onto ket phi sub n. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends and visit universityphysicstutorials.com.